back to season four of the Laravel podcast. I'm your host, Matt Stauffer. And today I will be joined by Eric Barnes, the founder of Laravel News and an OG Laravel programmer. Stay tuned. Welcome back to season four of the Laravel podcast. This is the season where every single episode is going to be about a specific topic about what you can learn or what you can do or just something that's going to be helped, especially helpful for people who are new to the framework, but also hopefully relatively interesting, helpful for people who've been around for a while. Just like last season, you learn about people you thought you knew. The goal here is for you to learn something about every topic, even if you thought you were a total pro there already. Today's topic is going to be about learning Laravel for the first time and keeping up to date, whether keeping up to date means just learning the new stuff or continuing to learn even as you're a programmer. Lots of us have learned new stuff about Laravel even after we've been using it for quite a while. So before I give all the context about our guest, I would like for him to just say hi. So Eric, would you introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Eric Barnes. I am the uh, creator of Laravel News, um, work at Userscape, and we make HelpSpot uh, partners in Laravel Jobs. Laracon online and kind of basically just everywhere in the Laravel ecosystem that I can find a place to to fit in. So, Absolutely, uh, everywhere. Yeah, you fit in everywhere. I, it's you. It's funny you said that because I actually just wrote the um the the tweet or the description of this episode. I said he works at HelpSpot, and I, I just I always I always mix up Userscape versus HelpSpot. For those who don't know, Userscape is the company that Ian Landsman founded, and it has a, a primary product which is HelpSpot, and that's actually Taylor worked there as he was developing. I think it was versions two, three, four of the framework. So Eric has been around for ages and has worked with Taylor since the earliest days. He's been running Laravel. How long have you been running Laravel News? Uh, I actually started in, man, uh, 09, I want to say, is that, oh my no, goodness. That, that's it's, too late. I don't know. Yeah, it was, I think he uh, came out in like 2011 or something like that. Okay. So what it, me and Taylor got hired at Userscape at the same time, like the same oh, January really? of that year. Oh, I didn't know and, that. And, uh, so uh, sort of the backstory, Laravel News was really, I was just going to troll him on Twitter and I created Laravel <laughs> News and like, like tweet like retweet stuff about Laravel. And I was like, really, you know, so then I just kept doing it. And then eventually I was like, well, you know, this is kind of dumb just tweeting it because nobody can ever find anything that you tweet, you uh-huh. know, in two weeks. So I was like, well, I'll just put this on a website. And then that's kind of how it all got started. It was just that's sort awesome. of random. <laughs> what powered the, what powered the first version? Was it WordPress? Uh, no, it was, um, uh, they got bought out by WordPress. Uh, really popular mm. back in the day, like way back um, in the day. Movable um, type. No, uh, man. Okay. I'm curious. Nah, it's, it's, uh, the guy who was like one of the early founder, actually they sold to Yahoo and then Yahoo sold it to like WordPress. Um, Tumblr, Tumblr, that's it. Oh, it was on Tumblr. Interesting. Yeah, it was on Tumblr. Yes. So I actually, Tumblr is the best. I I love Tumblr because, you know, it had the, the four styles. You could do a link post, uh, you know, a dis- description, a photo or whatever. It was just kind of like the first social media yeah. sort of app or whatever. And uh, so I was on it originally. And then from there, I moved to uh, something homegrown, I believe. And then I then I switched okay. to WordPress eventually. Okay. That's kind of where it is now until um, the front end's on Laravel, the back end's on WordPress. Oh, okay. You do, are you consuming a REST API or are you hitting the, the eloquent directly or the table directly? Uh, I am doing uh, webhooks from WordPress. When I publish a post, it oh. pushes a webhook, and then I uh, pull it in through the API and add it to my own uh, normal Laravel database. Love it. We could do a so. whole episode sort about that, but sorry, I'm yes. geeking out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, no. so, so Eric has been around. He's an OG Laravel guy, and he has always just been friendly and helpful. He's a teacher. He is a uh, friendly networker and connector. And Laravel News Now is one, probably the best place to get consistent updates about what's going on. So I thought, man, if I want to talk about how to stay updated about Laravel, this is the guy, right? Like this is the space. And not only are they collecting um, together other content from other folks. They're also now, as of a couple of years ago, writing their own content. So he's got a couple authors who work with him and they're creating their own content and it's consistent and it's good. And I love it. So definitely check out Laravel-news.com and the Twitter account is slash Laravel news. Um, so that's kind of Eric. And of course he also works at HelpSpot and or at Userscape. See, I did again. And, uh, Lara jobs, all these things. So it has tons of experience in the community has always been around all the conferences. And so I just wanted to get Eric on to talk about two things. Now there's two aspects of this and the, in some ways they're the same and there's some ways they're different. So before we even get into talking about how other people should think about learning and keeping up to date, I just want to ask you, um, how did you learn Laravel? What was that process like? Well, that, it was actually kind of funny because, you know, back then it was, man, Laravel 3, I guess, because, you know, 1 and 2 came out within like two weeks of each other, I believe. And then yeah. um, 
So it was level three when I came on and or first found it. And I was coming from Code Igniter. So a lot of the things kind of blended together. Um, but it was really just a lot of trial and error for me. And then, yeah. but it was so, so small at the time. Like I could just ping Taylor and be like, you know, what am I yeah. supposed to do here? And uh, yeah. so that, that was, that was really helpful back in the day. Um, but, you know, now it's kind of, Laravel's gotten so huge and so much training materials is out on the internet now. So it's, it's a whole different world from, you know, when I first started. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just uh, a lot of trial and error back then. And, and yeah. uh, just trying to figure, figure out how to, how to do things or whatever. Yep. And uh, so, so you, you know, obviously you haven't learned Laravel today, but as you interact with the people around you who are learning Laravel, friends or people you talk to on Twitter, what is your sense of what the sources that most people use to learn Laravel today? Um, I guess it depends on the person more than anything. You know, um, mm -hmm. some people can just read the user guide and or the documentation and they can pick it yeah. up pretty well. Um, and then other people, you know, like the visual. So they'll, you know, go to Laracast or go watch, uh, you know, people like you streaming on Twitch and, mm -hmm. and just kind of follow along as they're doing it that way. Um, for me or even books, you know, I've got, I know you've got your book and then, um, of course, online tutorials and all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, when I first start learning something brand new, I, just kind of like to build something like I figure yep. out a problem and I'm like, this Same is here. what I'm going to do. And then I just start building it. And then when I get stuck, then I go try to find, you know, what I'm stuck about, yep. um, you know, where other people like to learn kind of all at once. And then, and then they're, you know, then they're good to go where I'm the complete opposite. I will. Um, I remember even first learning like PHP, I rebuilt an app like four times just over and over and over, just trying yep. to get better and coming up with the new ideas and stuff. And, uh, but that, that's the way I always pick it up and, so I guess it really depends on your learning style is, is, you know, how, yeah, that's a great how each point. person does it. Yeah. Um, and I, I think you, so you got, you, you mentioned books, you mentioned articles, you mentioned, uh, videos, you mentioned the documentation. And I think that those are a really good, I, I lost count of my fingers. Uh, that's a really good <laughs> list. I love that list. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, streams and interestingly, YouTube, there's a, there's a growing number of yes. people who are doing free content on YouTube, teaching you video stuff too. So if, if let's say, Let's say somebody wanted video. I mean, Laracast has been like the canonical source for video. So if you want to pay, you go to Laracast. If you want free, there's a couple um, popular teachers on YouTube who do um, to, to do Laravel stuff. Um, if you want to do articles, um, if you like reading tutorials and stuff like that, Laravel News, I'm just going to say, Laravel News is absolutely the best place to go. What, do you have a second or a third after that of, of places you've really consistently seen, you know, high quality articles? Usually... The way I find them is, <laughs> is kind of my own dog food there mm -hmm. is we have that link section where community can, can submit stuff. So yeah. I'll find content through there more than really like one specific going out spot. Uh, yeah. And usually, you know, as far as me learning, I just try to, you know, Google for whatever problem I'm having and then find something semi related or, or whatever. And then and then kind of yeah. go from there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't have a like a dedicated spot for like written tutorials that's coming I'm, I'm sort of drawing blanks on that right now, actually. Uh, well, I, I could share a few, but I do think yeah. that mo, mo, in the early days, there was a few key blogs where all the good stuff was. Yes. I don't think yes. it's like that anymore. And I think that you will see someone you've never heard of before write a really rich and robust tutorial. And I'm glad for your links thing because we wouldn't know about them in the past, right? Because they weren't from right. those few key blogs. So, I mean, Titan's been having a blog, my company Titan, and I've had a blog for a while. I kind of dropped off the blogging for a while. I picked it up again recently, but it's no longer in a space where I feel like, oh, I got to blog every single feature because you guys are covering them and a lot of other people are. Um, Spotsy, I think they have a blog, but I know that individual people at Spotsy have blogs and a lot right. of those are really high quality and a few individual people at Titan have blogs too. Um, so, you know, I would definitely check out anybody connected to one of the ones that you understand by name and, you know, beyond code, a lot of the people who are known in, um, the Laravel Twitter and Ter Laravel podcast spaces are there because they have good personal blogs. So I would definitely check those people, but it's interesting. Like it doesn't seem like there's one place to know, like who should I follow on Twitter about Laravel stuff? There's not a, just a single place for that. And I've thought about creating it in the past, but it feels like by doing that, I'm making value judgments about people. And I don't want to be right. like the person who decides if you're good enough to get in that list or not. So it just, it's this kind of like a, we're not really sure, but I do think that the Laravel news is a good place, not just to find good content, but to find creators of good content. Because if something gets featured on there, there's a really good chance that you're going to go to their blog and see other good stuff. So that's, I think that's a good one. Um, 
Okay, so that's for written content. In terms of video content, you got Laircast, you got the YouTube folks, um, mm -hmm. and a few people who put out individual kind of like groups of tutorials. Like uh, we frequently talk about um, Adam Wathen's tutorials. He's got one about testing. He's got one about um, using the collection pipeline. Um, and then a few other people have started putting out really great video series. Um, and then I guess podcasts. Let's talk podcasts for a second. Podcasts aren't always a learning resource, but sometimes they're a learning resource and, but they're definitely a good keeping up resource, right? So the Laravel news podcast is by far the best way to keep up with releases. They talk about packages. They talk about, um, uh, you know, pull requests to the, to like new features that came out and stuff like that. I think it's the best structured place to find updates on like new packages and new features in the, the Laravel world. I'm just going to say it straight out. I think the Laravel yeah. podcast that you're on is, is very cool, but I think it's more like broad, high level. You're not keeping up to date with it as much, you know, as maybe in the past. What other podcasts do you think there are? Or are there any that really focus on the Laravel community and people could use to like follow up with things or learn things? Do you think there are any or are all the rest of them a little mm. bit broader kind of scope? I, I think they're broader. The only other one I think you missed was Taylor's. Um, oh, right. Laracast uh, Snippet and Laravel Snippet. Yeah, both of those are, are pretty good. I know I know some of the Laracast snippets are more of like... That's true. They're not the Laravel More related. personal, general stuff. It's not really Laravel specific. True, um, where I know like Taylor's, it, it does try to be Laravel specific. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I'll... Uh, I'll uh, Michael and uh, Jacob, you know, they do an awesome job on that pod on our podcast. Yeah. So yes, I... I Definitely give them the thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. and, and you know what? If if anybody listens to this podcast episode and we're, tr you know, a lot of this isn't going to be just about lists of resources, but if you say, oh, you're totally missing this blog, you're totally missing this podcast. Great. Let us know. You know, we want to discover yes. these things. And I would say the best way to do it is to find the Laravel podcast Twitter account and find the tweet where I put this thing live and respond to that tweet so that it can all be together in one place. And I'll make sure that both Eric and I and see those and, and, and I see other people and the rest of y'all, if you're looking for more things to learn, hopefully you go check out that link. And in the next couple of days after this releases, you'll see people sharing a lot of really good resources there. So definitely please use that spot to share your resources. Yes. The same way too. My door is always open. You know, my email is in my Twitter bio. If you have, if you've created something, you know, just email me and let me know. And you know, maybe, you know, we'll do our best to try to, uh, uh, you know, share it out or whatever. Yeah. Uh, try to get, try to get people coming your way. And one of the things I love about Laravel news, and I didn't mean for this to be like a, a Laravel news session, but I just think it's so good that when I'm talking about what's good, I'm going to talk about it a lot. I love in, in the last episode with Taylor, we were talking about, you know, he said, what's your goal for this year? And he said, one of the big things I would want is to see there be more people become Laravel, you know, quote unquote, Laravel famous. And in my talk at Laracon last year, I said, that's my biggest goal is to bring more people to the community and bring more people to prominence in the community who aren't right now. One of the things I love about Laravel news is, I learn about people and I learn about packages and I learn about blog posts. I never would have otherwise because I don't know who those people are. And I've never once felt, oh, you know, only certain people get, you know, like top, top billing there. When there's something good, you guys put it up. And I love that. So yeah, I encourage everybody don't feel imposter syndrome about writing for or submitting your content to or submitting packages to Laravel News because there is so much diversity of thought and opinion and everything like that there. So definitely check it out. Mm-hmm. So my next question for you, Eric, was how do you recommend people learn today? And it's interesting because you have already mentioned that you think that everyone learns a little bit differently. So maybe, you know, yeah. maybe it's part of how you recommend is to know, to learn how you learn and then, you know, find what makes the most sense for you. Is, is there anything else other, you know, I just sort of answered for you outside of what I just said, are there any other aspects? If somebody said, you know what, I really want to become a Laravel programmer, where would you send them? Or would you have a conversation with them first learning about their learning style? I would actually, yeah, I would probably do that first would, would be the learning style. Um, you know, even it, it's sort of interesting. This is sort of off topic a little bit, but you know, do when it. you first approached, approached me about this, I started really trying to pay attention to how my kids are learning. Um, so oh, cool. my one daughter is loves music. Like she's like, loves listening to like all the songs and what she does, she'll listen to them over and over. And then she'll do the little, you know, show the lyrics and then she'll listen to it while reading the lyrics. And then she'll actually mm. take it and go write the lyrics down. And then, you know, after she does that, like two or three times, then she has it, the song memorized for the rest of her life. And, uh, I just oh, think that's, that's fascinating, really fascinating because I would yeah. never, I would never do that at all. And, uh, and you know, it just kind of, it just kind of goes with, you know, how, I guess her learning style and how she, she likes to pick up things. And the other daughter's totally that. opposite. She, she, she doesn't learn that way, but, uh, but a lot that. of it's just for her, it's more like repetition and, and just kind of, you know, keep, keep doing something and then you, and then you finally learn it and, and pick it up. 
Um, but yeah, so that, and that is sort of what I was leading to in the beginning. That's sort of my style is the repetition. That's why I rebuild something four yep. times is because, you know, each time I do it, I'm learning a little bit different, but I'm also reinforcing what I've already picked up mm, and, that. and sort of, you know, putting it into practice, I guess is the right word. Yeah. Um, next time because, you might have to Google that one thing a little bit less because you've now done it a couple of times. Right. Yes. Yes. Huh. But you're always, but you're always Googling. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. I love that. I, I hadn't realized this, but right now there's a thing I'm doing where I'm going through my blog and maybe a couple of Titan sites and I'm doing, um, the hyper optimization on the front end delivery, trying to speed it up and optimize it or whatever. And at some point, um, Dave, our, our project, our production manager said, you know, are you working from a checklist? And I said, no, I'm doing this over and over so I get good at it so I can write the checklist. And it's that right, same kind yes. of thing. Like I'm like you, I learn by doing the thing. And the, the, the way I best learned Laravel at the beginning was to build a whole bunch of apps that were sort of poorly built. Um, and then the problem is it, it, I'm not the type to rebuild them like you. <laughs> so they're still there <laughs> poorly built, you know, and ho- thankfully I've been in, able to get other people. But if you like want to see me writing bad code, go look at the original commits of Symposium because that's old, you know, and but the next built app I built after that was better. The next app after that was better. And so it's like you, like I'm learning each time and, and it's that building process. And obviously not everybody's like that. Some people say, give me a book, you know, I'll read right, 550 yeah. pages before I write a line of code. So, yeah, I, I love that idea of like th- figure out how you learn. Um, that's really good. And, and and the same way with videos too. Like I can't jump in and like watch. So like even take like Jeffrey Way, you know, on Laracast, mm-hmm. they're, you know, super highly po- polished and, and quick and easy, but it's like, he'll just do like one little thing that I glance over and then, then I get stuck and then I have to go back and rewatch a whole bunch of times. And then I'm like, yep. Oh yeah, now I see how he did that. But yep. it's just like, I don't know. It's just my learning style is not the more of the video. It's more of the, just do it on your own type still. I'm totally but uh, the same yeah, way. And, and the same way with books, like it, it really depends on what I'm learning. Like uh, right yeah. now I'm trying to get better at golf. So if some, if I see somebody mention a book on golf, I'll just go buy it and, and hopefully, you know, something in there is worth the, the, yeah. the price of the book. And uh, I love that. I don't know. It's just so interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, so one of the things I was wanting to think about is, you know, this, this particular episode is about two things, learning Laravel in the first place and then keeping up to date and keeping up to date means two things. It's really about three things, actually. It's about learning Laravel for the first time. It's about continual learning when you're building apps and you feel like you're a product professional, but you still have things you got to try that are new, you know. And then it's also keeping up to date, like knowing what's changed, knowing what's introduced and that kind of stuff. As you think about those different ones, do you do you have a sense that like doing one versus the other is a little different? You know, is it likely that people will use one medium for one and another medium for another or whatever? Or is it all just kind of a continual learning process and there's really no big difference? I would lean more to like a continual learning process. Um, you know, the, once you've understood the basics of Laravel and you can build your apps and stuff like that, then, you know, keeping up to date with all the packages and all this, the community might not be important to you at all. And it might, in yeah. it, you know, if you don't want to be in the, in the community, then, you know, it doesn't matter. You just, you know, you learn on demand when you need it, you know, go find whatever. Um, and that's kind of what we try to do with Laravel News is try to pick up, you know, so you've you've learned the basics. So now we just want to try to get you involved in seeing everything that's being created. And maybe, you know, you can find find a package where, you know, that will help you out or it, it inspires you to build your own. And then, you know, you can give that back to the community. Um, yeah. I feel like I'm kind of rambling off, this, no, off the actual good, question. <laughs> can, can you repeat if I didn't if I didn't answer it right? Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think you answered it well. Um, and I think that. Um, I'll, I'll chip in here too. I think that um, keeping up to date with Laravel often um, has a little bit less to do with um, learning how to use each new thing that comes out. And it has a little bit more to do with learning what there is. Um, and then ongoing learning has a little bit more to do with learning the things that are new. So like, like let's imagine Sanctum. Like, so, you know, so let's think Sally learned Laravel. Let's say she's a Laracast person. She learned Laravel through Laracast and now she's got a job as a Laravel programmer. So that's learning Laravel keeping up to date with Laravel, she might be listening to the Laravel news podcast so that she can know when new packages come out and the Laravel snippet, those two. Um, She knows when new packages come out. She knows that Sanctum was released, originally originally named Airlock, now it's named Sanctum, and it's an API thing. So she's up to date. She knows it's there. Um, But then there's also this continual learning aspect where she knows it's there, but she doesn't know how to use it yet. And then she hits her first project where she needs to use Sanctum. And at that point, she might open up the Sanctum Laracast video, or she might try to install it, or she might look at the docs. So it seems like I think that you're right. Continual learning when it comes to learning the code 
and learning new code that comes out later. And really, I think the only aspect that's really different is just keeping up to date in terms of knowing what's new. And I mean, there is a really great change log, um, although I think that's probably going to be tough for the average person to follow along with. But I do think that, yeah, Laravel News Podcast and the Laravel Snippet are probably the best ways to um, to keep up to date just knowing broadly. Do you, do you agree with that? I do, yes. And um, yeah. I, th- I think you also mentioned a good point right there. Um, the you know, when you've got a full-time job and family and everything else, you, it's really impossible to, to keep up with every single thing. So you have to kind of pick and choose. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to me, you, you sort of transition into more of a learn on demand. Like you mentioned with the sanctum, you know, I, you get an, you get a high level, high level overview of what it is and mm-hmm. you just keep it in the back of your mind. So in the future, you know, six months or a year from now, when you start on something new, you're like, Oh yeah, I remember they have this, let's go check it out. And then, you know, and then, so it's more about just reinforcing what you, you know, what all is out there. So that way, when it is actually time, then you can just jump right in and, and you've, yep. you know, you don't waste a week or two building something that's already been done. Yeah. I, and I think that's really key is that the number of times that we've come into somebody who says, hey, I've got this Laravel code base a couple of years old. You know, can you update it for us and then add these features? The number of times where I've said you have hand, handwritten things that have been in Laravel for years you know, is really high. And so I'm realizing that even if not all of us have the ability to go sit and do a toy app with Sanctum or whatever else is new, uh, it'd be, it'd be helpful for all Laravel developers, in my opinion, to at least know what's out there. And I do think that like combination of Laravel news slash Laravel news podcast slash Laravel snippet is a good way to at least just have a sense of what's going on. So it's funny because my next question there actually was what are the best (laughs) ways to keep up with today with Laravel ongoing? I think we just kind of shared that. Um, so let's, 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 well, I was going to say, let's add the newsletter. Um, because every uh, Sunday I I, I do a uh, weekly, it's basically like a, I call it the Laravel newsletter. It comes out every Sunday at 8 a.m. Eastern standard time. And what I do is recap the entire week of every post that we've made, all the Laravel Mm -hmm. jobs, all the community links, all the upcoming events and, just I just try to kind of wrap everything up that happened within that week into that newsletter. And then that way you can, you know, if you don't want to follow along every single day, you can just scan that on Sunday and be done with it. Yep. And, and uh, that's what I do. Actually. Know. I love yeah. I love your your blog. But when I see something on your Twitter, what I do is tack it into my brain that that Sunday I need to remember to pull that thing up. And that the newsletter every single Sunday I sit down or maybe Monday morning, I sit down, I click through to a whole bunch of them. And then I also share a ton of them in Titan Slack. I'm like, Hey, make sure y'all take a look at this one or whatever. That's, that's, that's definitely a highlight. So, all right. So as you think about the process of learning Laravel, what do you think um, some of the things are that get people stuck? What are some of the challenges? Some, some things that are hard or that, that get people stuck and they don't know how to solve it or anything like that. What, what gets in the way of people learning Laravel? Well, Hmm. That's interesting. Um, I'm going to say maybe like eloquent just because it's kind of mm-hmm. wrapping your head around, um, you know, it's, it's different than just writing SQL. So you got to kind of change your mindset a little bit. So I think that might yeah. be one of the first stumbling blocks, like when you're very first learning, um, I'm trying to think of anything else. It's, it's, that was sort of the hardest part for me was figuring out the relationships and, yeah. and just kind of wrapping my head around, you know, this belongs to, this is, you know, whatever. And, um, yeah, but from there, I don't know. Um, how how about you when you started? What was it? What was it? What was tricky for you? That's a great question. I know that I had a lot of trouble learning object oriented programming, but I think that was pre Laravel. I think that was code igniter when I had the most trouble. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the hardest part for me learning Laravel, and I think this is true for a lot of people, is just knowing what the idiomatic Laravel way is to do something. I think that's another big thing our clients ask us. They're like, hey, we're yeah. talented programmers, but we just don't know the right Laravel way to do it. And we know that if we're doing it not the Laravel way, sometimes we'll end up accidentally fighting against the framework. And so it's interesting because yeah. talking with Taylor, we said, well, it's not like Laravel has an ideology. You don't have to do DDD. But there are some things that are like, if you do it, you know, in a hyper, you know, dependency injectioned way, some in a certain way, Laravel is going to play really nicely along with you. And if you do hyper dependency injection in a different way, sometimes you're going to have to recreate things that the framework already provides to you. And so knowing those little things. And so I think learning what idiomatic Laravel code is like is, is a challenge. And I'm trying to, what would be the best way to do that? Like to learn that? I mean, it is the open, is the code. So does it, isn't the code for, um, one of Taylor's projects open source? Is the cloud it one, was, I think. I, I think that's oh, not anymore. Okay. Yeah. He took it down. 
to me, oh, yeah, complained. people are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, what what else is there that you think that people could look to to learn what idiomatic Laravel looks like? There is um, actually, you could probably just follow the uh, the to do app that he created as part of the documentation in Laravel. It, it actually came out with Laravel five, I believe, okay. but I think it's still part of the documentation. Now, I want to say he did it sort of like the way he would do any app. I don't um, actually know whether I remembered that that existed. <laughs> ah. So yeah, so um, Eric and I just took a moment Googling. We discovered that there is a basic task list that you can see as a tutorial in the docs for Laravel 5, 1, and 5, 2. We'll link it in the show notes. Um, but it's not in the docs anymore. We're not sure why. We'll, we'll have to go learn. Um, but that I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that. There's tons of people on the internet who have written getting started ones. But sometimes... Um, I do think that basic task, uh, app list is good because it's from Taylor. But I do think that sometimes one of the best ways to look is to see actual functioning applications because so many tutorials are the same task apps. So, I mean, there's definitely, I'll try and make a list um, of, and I'll put a note here, make a list of open source um, Laravel apps. And there might even, do you know a list anywhere? If not, I'll, I'll make one real quick. Not, not that I'm, a, not that I can think okay. of. Well, if I'll either find one, I'll ask on Twitter, I'll either find one or make one of open source Laravel apps. And I mean, just to give you a, a quick example, Titan has, if you should go to github.com slash Titan co, um, we have quite a few of our apps public there. Um, and not to say that every one of them is great. Like I said, symposium probably still has stuff embedded in it from my, my battle days. Um, and Nova packages, we were experimenting with some things that didn't quite always work out, but you can at least just take a look at those. And uh, well, again, we'll link other ones, um, to just show you what a, you know, a normal, you know, not perfect, but a normal normal um, Laravel project looks like. Um, and especially, oh, and OnRamp. I also have this project OnRamp, which I should make sure to talk about later um, that's up there. So yeah, I do think that one way to think about learning um, how to write idiomatic Laravel is just to look at how people who've been writing Laravel for five plus years write it. Um, and not everybody has internalized it, but definitely at least at Titan, we, we do everything we can to not fight the framework. So I do think that it, so anyway, your question was what, what got stuck with me? I think it's idi learning what idiomatic Laravel looks like. So yeah. That's interesting. And I, I was going to I was going to mention um, you brought up another idea as far as looking at open source apps. Uh, another good thing that I've found is to to kind of reverse engineer packages. So if yeah. you're going to if you're looking for something and you find a package, go back, go through its code and just figure out how it works. Um, you know, duplicate it on your own or, or pull it in, whatever you feel like. But, you know, at least go through it and see how it works and try to get your head around, you know, how they're doing things. And uh, I found that been really beneficial. Yeah, and I do think that leveling up on Laravel, this is not an initial learning step, but if you want to level up, go source dive Laravel itself. Yeah. And and, and yeah. I, I, some people do that by uh, reading through one file at a time. That's overwhelming to me. It's not how my brain works. But what I do is I'll open up an IDE that has like click to see the function definition in it. And I'll open up a file that I was working with and say, I wonder how that cache remember method works. So I'll control click on the remember method. And then I just from there, not from top to bottom, from there, I'll work through the entire cache, doc, uh, cache source. And I go, oh, interesting. So it's doing this and it's, ca it's caching that thing to cache this thing. And okay, cool. So I feel like that's a really fun way to learn just little bits and blips. And you also learn more about idiomatic Laravel because in theory, all the code in the Laravel source should be the way, you know, Laravel code should be written in general. Right. So. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. I, I rarely do that. That's kind of funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I've, I've always done it a little bit. Um, and then I did it Basically, it became an embedded practice when I wrote the book. I mean, I, I was just telling somebody yes. yesterday, I used to blog all the time because every time I learned something new, I'd blog it. And then I wrote the book and I had to learn everything. And then there's like, oh, well, nothing's new, <laughs> new anymore. <laughs> so now I have to actually come up with interesting ideas to blog. So, all right. So if you think about the way that people learn Laravel for the first time and keep up to date about Laravel, is there any one change that you would make um, where you think that there should be an asset or resource out there that isn't, or you wish people were thinking about it differently because it would help them out? Hmm. That's interesting. Um, the, I don't know if this is, uh, if everybody would agree with this, but speaking of kind of the idiomatic Laravel, I would like you know, at least for me, if I stay true to the documentation and the Laravel way, I've found everything easy. Um, it's Amen. when I've uh, branched off into, you know, these other ideas and it just, it ends up always biting me in the butt where, um, you know, all that sounds good, but as soon as I branch off, then I end up having trouble. <laughs> yeah. 
And it's interesting because it's not just that you're fighting the framework, but also you're, you're fighting the framework can often mean like losing the opportunity to use other conveniences that you haven't tapped into yet. And when you decide that you're just going to, you know, forego this one aspect of, for example, the authorization system, then all of a sudden you might not get that password controller the way you want, or you might not be able to use Sanctum the way you want or something because you decided in this one small spot, you, you, you know, but you know better and you can do it on your own, but all of a sudden your thing doesn't integrate with the rest. And that's not always true. Like the, some of the best systems in Laravel allow you to write your own driver for a thing so that you can still get the benefit of the connectivity. But I would just say maybe like, be wary, be aware of what the, the, the recommended layer way, way doing of doing it is not necessarily because it's definitively right or you can't ever change, but straying off that path could potentially incur some costs of like later things not playing together as nicely. So it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of sounding like we're saying it's super restrictive. It's not that restrictive. You know, you can, <laughs> you can, you can program, you can do DDD, you can do all sorts of different event sourcing, but know what you're doing when you're doing those things. Um, and those things aren't like non Laravel. There's plenty of Laravel people doing those things and other things, but I think it's most often when something that is specified by Laravel, like Laravel doesn't have anti DDD or whatever encoded into it, but it does have an auth system, right? It's mostly when people are deciding that the things that do come out of the box in Laravel aren't right. Just know that whatever you're building to replace it might not play as nicely with the other pieces. I, I guess that's yes. a better way of thinking about it. And two, you know, and think about five years from now, you know, when you come back to this project and you're like, what in the world, you know, where is, all, what, what did I do here? If, yep. if you were just, if you were just kept with the standard, then you'd be like, oh yeah, this is, you know, I don't know. Yep. <laughs> I've been bitten by that so many times because, because yep. I work on like long lived apps you know yeah. we we have a few um a few secondary apps you know we build them we deploy them and then it'll be you know four or five years you come back to it it's they kind of yeah. just sit there because there's just not enough time for everything in the world to do <laughs> yeah yeah and you're sitting there wishing not not only that you had used the way that you you use now but also that you could really easily do the upgrades you know but those upgrades yeah. are gonna be tough when <laughs> you know you have to upgrade your own code and i, I think one of the things i love about a, about a framework in general is reducing the amount of code that I have the um, the responsibility for managing, right? Like the less code I mm -hmm. have to write and manage ongoing, the faster I can produce the work, sure, but also the more I can maintain it well in the long term. And so I, I love that thinking. You're saying like, you know, don't, don't make me have to remember five years down the road why I did this thing different. Just let Laravel handle that thing. Yes, that's, yeah, that's, like that. that's the way I look at, the, look at it. That's the way I like to program things. I like, um, I like that. Yeah. I mean, and two, it's, it kind of depends on how you look at programming in general. Like programming is to me is a way for me to build apps. Um, mm -hmm. other people like yeah. to, you know, what do you call it? Study it. Uh, that that's kind of like their passion where my, yeah. my passion is the product, not the, not the not code the that gets me to the product. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Yeah. That's different. The process. Yeah. I, I mean, that's you and me too, you know, and, and Taylor and yeah. I did definitely talk in the last episode about being productive and useful and practical are really kind of high values in the Laravel community. I, I definitely agree. And mm -hmm. I do like learning about how to code well and learning about new code, but I, I'm with you. It, it, for me, it is for the goal of the, the output um, rather than for the goal of being ideologically pure or architecturally pure or correct or whatever. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm there much, very much with you there. Um, so you know what? I like this. This is a ton of fun. And I ran out of questions and none of my follow ups. <laughs> you, you answered half of my questions in the follow up. So is there anything else that you think that we should talk about when you think about what it's like for people to learn Laravel and for people to keep up to date with what's new and then to learn new things ongoing? Is there anything else you think we should say or think about or you want to bring up today? Um, uh. Okay, cool. We got I, it. I, I, actually, actually, I, I would like yeah. to ask you a question Go now, now that you think about that. So, so the Laravel book up and running. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, are you coming out? With, are you going to start coming out with another version in another year or? We were or thinking how, how, about it. So, so switching. So what, what the story of the book real quick for anybody who doesn't know, um, I was contacted by O'Reilly to write the book. Um, it was supposed to be an up and running book, which is supposed to be like 150 pages. And as I got to writing it, I said, Oh, I really want this canonical book and ended up writing a 500 page book took forever. But it had, I just said, if you finish this book, you're going to know what it takes to be a Laravel programmer. And because it was so much work, keeping it up to date was difficult. And it got a couple of years in and I was just really having a lot of trouble keeping up to date. And I said, let's call it a new edition. It's the second edition. And I revitalized everything, rewrote the testing 
chapter to also work. And I brought in a research assistant, uh, Wilbur Powery. And the research assistant basically kept up to date on the change logs and said, here's the things you need to update. And so sometimes he would just tell me, hey, update this thing. Sometimes he would even find where that thing was in the code or in, in the, you know, because the, the book itself is powered by ASCII doc, which is basically Markdown. So he would actually go into the repo and say, here's a note here, change this here. So all I had to do was just show up and write about that stuff, which was super, super helpful. So when I got out of that process, that was exhausting. I was, you know, probably hundreds more hours to do the second edition. And just, you know, I'm not making much money off this book. Working with a traditional publisher, especially now that they sell everything through Amazon, and so I make even less, I'm making like a do- couple dollars on, on each sale of the book. So the book is really a, a resource, not a, a moneymaker. And so what I just realized was, why don't we just always keep it up to date? And so I'm just paying Wilbur to constantly, you know, I'm not paying him a ton. Thank you, Wilbur. Um, but I'm paying him to constantly watch the change logs and to just give me, you know, now what he does is for each version, each major version that comes out, he gives me a pull request. And it's basically, if it's a tiny code change, he just changes it in the code. And if it needs writing, he just gives me a note, write about this or change the writing about this. And then I go through, sit down at once and just say, all right, I'm going to do all the updates. So I did all the 5.8 updates a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to do all the 6.0 updates this weekend, and he's going to give me the pull request for all the 7 updates really soon. And so the, the, the upside of that is we don't have to worry about pushing out new additions. The downside of that is I just learned that unlike O'Reilly, who is who I recommend you use in the past for eBooks, O'Reilly doesn't sell eBooks anymore. They made a big change because of the, you know, the industry was changing. And now the only way to get the eBooks is through, I think, eBooks.com and Amazon, and neither of those give you updates. So if you bought ah. the book for Laravel 5.7, you don't get those updates. And I'm sitting here thinking everyone is getting these updates pushed to them and they're not. And I'm really frustrated. So um, I have to come up with a solution there. I really appreciate you asking this. I have to come up with a solution, but anyone who buys it new, whether print or ebook, will get the latest version. So right now um, you're going to get 5.8 in a couple of weeks. If you buy it new, you're going to get 6.0. And if you buy it a couple of weeks after that, you'll get 7.0. But I, I'm going to have a chat with O'Reilly to figure this out because I need some kind of distribution channel where people don't have to buy a new version every six months. Um, the good news is very little changes in those versions. Like if you got the 5.8 version, don't worry about buying the 6.0 version. Almost nothing's different. 7.0 has got some changes that might make it worth it. Um, so I'm just going to try to keep being open and honest with people about when when it's worth kind of getting a new version. Um, but the goal with the, the, the not making a different edition was both saving me time and energy um, you're not wasting time on all the, 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 just the rote stuff that comes with a new edition. Cause it's basically a new book in their catalog, but also trying to get it to the point where people were constantly getting updates. And so when I learned that's not happening, I I've, I've got a, I got a task on my plate to fix that. So, and I'm glad you mentioned that because that actually, I'm sorry, there's one more thing I want to talk about. Um, I was going to write another book that was a hundred page quick start to Laravel, uh, and publish it myself. So I could do that kind of constant updating thing. And I realized it was better instead of a book to make a learning resource. And so I announced it at Laracon last year. It's called OnRamp. It's still in process, but if you go to onramp.dev right now, you can actually see a ton of learning resources, follow along with them. It points to a lot of free resources like videos and stuff like that. And it says, here's the things you should learn in order. And for each thing that you're learning, it says, here's the skills you should learn here. And here's places to go learn those things right now. You sign in with an account. It's a free account. We're not going to spam you or anything. You can check off each thing as you learn it. And we're still building it. It still needs work. We're still, we're almost done with implementing an actual real design instead of a template. But I do think that like that was kind of the direction I was trying to go is can we find the canonical place to learn and then can we have the canonical place to keep up to date and i, I always have thought of laravel news as the canonical place to up to date and i was like can i make on ramp the, the canonical place to learn for people who learn using either articles or videos so anyway sorry that was a long answer to a short question but thanks for asking no that's great that's great uh yes yeah, so yeah so on ramp i actually forgot about that that was I was at that conference and uh, yeah. I remember writing it down, but I didn't cover it because I was waiting on the official release. So I, yep. I think that's why I actually haven't even put it on the, cause I just I'll, checked the, the site and it's not on there. Yeah. Why don't, um, why don't I, I tell you to do the official release once we've got the design out? Cause that's going to make a big yeah, difference in the perception of quality, I think. So the design, I'm hoping it's a couple of weeks away from done. It might even be done uh, uh, live by the time this podcast comes out. So I will, I'll ping you. Um, and then you listeners, I'll put a tweet out about it the moment we have the design implemented and we'll still keep working on it, but I think it's at least going to be good enough to really push out to people then. So, yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, All right. The more, the okay. more learning resources, you know, we have as a community, the better off everybody is just because, you know, you pull in new people, you, you, you know, train everybody. It's, it's good for everybody. So that's, what's, what's really great. Love it. I totally agree with you. All right. So I got one last thing. It's the last moment that we do in every single episode of this season of the podcast. I got a fun thing. So I always see you mountain biking in your photos. 
Can you tell me a little bit about biking? Like, how did you get into biking originally? What's your backstory? Why do you like it so much? How often do you get to go biking? And maybe like, what's a cool story or a, an accomplishment or a win or something that you've had with mountain biking? Oh, wow. Okay. So I'll, I'll try not to get too uh, long and drawn out on this one. I'll give you the, the high level overview. All right. Got so it. my, my grandpa, my grandfather had a motorcycle dealership, uh, mm -hmm. started in 1979. And of course I had my first motorcycle at two years old, uh, <laughs> race motorcycles, <laughs> race motocross, uh, street bikes, just everything. Um, they wow. ended up selling the business in the early two thousands, but I ended up getting hurt a bunch uh, breaking a lot of bones. And, uh, Oof. I just, so I, I kind of quit riding the motorcycles and, and moved to mountain biking just for the exercise really. And, uh, I love being on two wheels, um, yeah. basically more than anything. So, so the mountain biking is great because, you know, it gets you outside, it gets you exercise and it's really hard to do at times uh, until yeah. you get trained up to do it. Um, yeah. the other part that's great, you know, if you ride when you first get started, you know, you might go ride out in the woods for four miles. Well, the only way back is to ride four miles back. So, you know, <laughs> you're, it. you're doubling your workout because you're yeah. out in the middle of nowhere. The only way home is either to walk or to ride. Nice. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I've been mountain biking for, I don't know, 10 years. Eh, nice. no, I've been mountain biking since I was 20 and then I quit for about 10 years in between there Got somewhere. It. And then now I've started back in the last probably four years and, um, I try to go two or three times a week and Oh, awesome. Uh, just kind of, I listen, I put, I put my AirPods in, put my ebook on and just ride through what, the woods. What are the and only the people weather. I know who can wear AirPods and then they stay in when uh, you're exercising? <laughs> yes. They're, they're awesome. Yes. They're the best thing ever. And, uh, I I'll, I always listen to like, um, uh, like, like not old fiction, but more of like, um, I don't know, like people, uh, <laughs> draw a blank like on the, the genre. It's, uh. <laughs> biographies yeah yeah <laughs> the people uh, people uh, books yeah i listen to people yes so oh, cool. it's just it's just great to me and uh so yeah so i've been doing that forever and um a fun story i broke my hand two years ago Oof. I've, yeah uh, i remember that yeah i did a boxer what were you fracture doing? i i was mountain biking in a race um it was like a teammate race and mm -hmm. it had been raining for weeks it mm. normally they they close the trails when it rains that much but because it was a race and everybody paid mm -hmm. the money, they, they left it open. And, uh, you we come down this hill and at the bottom is a wooden bridge mm -hmm. and you kind of hit it at a little bit of an angle. And for whatever reason, it was just like slick as like black glass mm -hmm. or black ice. And it was just instantly, I just crashed and I hit my hand on the wooden bridge and it did a, what they call a boxer fracture. And so it, it uh, pushed the two bones back and Oof. had to go through surgeries and, and it was just, Six just, just you're going so fast that it just hit the, the deck so hard. It didn't get like crushed or anything. It just hit the, the, the bridge so hard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So Oof. when, so, yeah, so I was going so fast when it fell over my hand, it, my hand was actually still on the handlebar when it hit and really? it just the way it hit it, it popped it back. Yeah. Oof. So yeah, so that was if, not fun. If you go check out uh, Eric's uh, history and Twitter, you'll see videos of him working from an iPad one handed and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I was, very, I was super impressed with how much work you were able to get done during that time. Yes. So I could, I switched to an iPad because the keyboard was small and I could yeah. do it with one hand where the bigger keyboards, I would struggle because my hands are, I'm, you know, I'm only like what, five, three. So I have small hands anyway. So, you know, having the bigger keyboard, I couldn't actually type one handed very well. So I switched everything to the iPad and, and, uh, it worked really well. I, I liked yeah. it. Um, the only thing bad was VM on, you know, yeah. using remote servers and using VM because VM is terrible. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't at me. <laughs> VM is terrible. Don't at me. <laughs> yeah. Have, have, have being forced to learn VIM in order to do your job. I'm sure it, it's a faster learning curve. But it also probably makes you not love Jim in that VM in that context. So yes, but I, well, I'm hoping, I'm hoping they'll get VS code, you know, set up on a I, I heard something the saying that they're going to have that with a server server version and you can SSH in or whatever. So yeah, um, I'm excited for that. Well, thanks for sharing that. Um, so that is it for today. Um, before we cut it, can you tell people how to follow you, how to follow, follow Laravel news and anything else you think they should do? Yeah. So I'm Eric L Barnes, pretty much everywhere on the internet. Um, yep. Always with the L because there's another Eric Barnes that's an author and stole my name. <laughs> but uh, you can follow me basically anywhere with that. And then Laravel News is laravel-news.com. Um, join the newsletter. It comes out every Sunday. Uh, listen to the podcast and um, 
just stay up to date. Let me know, you know, if you ever, same way, you know, I'm, I'm very approachable. If you yep. find uh, something that we can do better, just let me know, you know, I'll, I'll uh, take it into consideration. I love and, it. Um, I, think, I think that's about it. <laughs> Well, Eric, dude, it has been a ton of fun talking to you. And I want to thank you both for hanging out with me today and also just for all the work you do for our community. You are a tireless contributor to the community and a, and a tireless positive face. Um, so I, I appreciate you so much. And thank you so much for everything you do and for hanging out with me today. Yes, sir. And I appreciate it. This was fun. Be better than I thought. I don't usually do Good. podcasts. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so future guests, you know, Eric didn't want to do it and he, he enjoyed it. So don't worry. It's going to be easy. So, all right. Well, thank you all so much. And uh, all this stuff will be in the show notes and we'll see you next time.